Are you ready? I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not that. <laughs> you mean you weren't expecting Mr. Blobby? <laughs> I feel nothing says pointlessly gendered products like a big pink blob called Mr. Blobby. <laughs> that was worth the wait. <laughs> Is Mr. Blobby just a British thing? I think so. I don't know if it translates like across the oceans. Our uh, British fans will know of Mr. Blobby. And anyone who's not filming Mr. Blobby will be by the end of this. Was a UK singles chart topper back in 1993. And he did have his spouse, Mrs. Blobby, and their son, Baby Blobby. I never knew there was a Blobby family. Blobby brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm pickling it now. Mr. Blobby family. <laughs> I just remembered how terrifying he was. was scary. <laughs> I made a choice today and it was madness. <laughs> Georgia the jungle. Georgia the jungle. You wouldn't believe how many times I'll be sitting minding my own business doing something and it will just pop into my head with that theme tune. George, George, George of the jungle, watch out for that Bobby! <laughs> the content I didn't know that I needed today. <laughs> and then we'll have a spin-off with Baby Blobby's Baby Blobby's. <laughs> That's much ruder than it is. <laughs> there is somewhere that basically one of the slang words for condom is just like a blob. Like you put a blob on it or something. So it is quite rude, actually. <laughs> Let's see if I can line up the blobby correctly this time. <laughs> it, just, it just gets ruder and ruder the more you see it. Hello, I'm Sister. Hi, I'm Sister Alaska. <laughs> and this is utter nonsense. <laughs> Too right it is. This is the show where we pour a cup of tea. And utter whatever nonsense pops into our heads. What kind of nonsense is that? That's up in here. And this is what you get to enjoy this episode. This is basically a laid back chat between friends and blobbies. <laughs> <laughs> And a new episode is released at the start of each month. So make sure you like and subscribe so you're kept up to date with um, when we release new episodes. Uh, they're on the first of the month every month. Um, and hit the bell notification as well. That's the thing. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <Blobby. laughs> oh, that's a bit <laughs> oh, my. There might be too much nonsense for me to bear. We've only just started. <laughs> Apart from having a Mr. Blobby filled episode, and we are we are honoured. What is today's episode actually about? This time we're gonna troll through the internet and find some pointlessly gendered products. I'm sure everyone at this point is well aware that there are a myriad of products out there that for some reason are gendered when it's not necessary. Oh, they colour them pink and it drives me mad. <laughs> you can just tell how mad you are. <laughs> the rage! The rage! <laughs> we thought it might be a good idea to have a look at some of the products that are gendered unnecessarily and talk a bit about it and hopefully raise awareness of why we should just get rid of these things it's like it doesn't really matter what your gender is if you want to buy it you buy it and stop increasing the price when you color things pink pink is a very expensive color let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there's there's almost no I, th I think the only thing that i could ever think is to be a gendered product is something that you're probably going to use for your genitalia and everything else 
It doesn't bloody matter. I mean, just because you operate it with your genitalia doesn't mean that you have the gender they're assuming that you have. Very true, actually, yes. So let's just stop gendering things. Go stop. And, you know, people just buy whatever suits them. <laughs> I think that pretty much hits it on the head, doesn't it? In which case, I think we should just dive in and have a look. <laughs> See for ourselves. Let me get my first meme up. God, Trojan are ugly, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry. Everyone starts out as a child. As you can tell, Blobby and Babushka are not one for children. Some of your biggest fans. Children, are they not? I know. It's ultimate irony. <laughs> so, to kick us off, we have a lovely two picture meme. First one child making a face. I don't know how to describe this face. Someone that's just got that look on their face like they want to punch your face in. I would never do such a thing though. So I'm just guessing. <laughs> From Alaska's guess, we'll say we've got a <laughs> baby on top, ready to punch your lights out. With the text underneath, Dylan is the baby boy's name that has dropped in popularity the most over the past 10 years. And then, we have a little smiling baby with a little hat on, fluffy little bits at the side. And they're saying underneath, for the girls, it's Sabre. There's a very strange unspoken thing happening here that says little boys are kind of slugs and snails type stereotype. And the girls are all sweetness and light. I mean, I imagine they can both pull that thug face whenever they're not getting their own way. I might trust the baby, the first baby, a bit more, the thug baby. The one underneath, that smile is slightly unnerving to me. I mean, I bet you what they're not showing you in that picture is that smile is a, I've just cracked and you're going to clean it up. That's a smug satisfaction smile. If you dress them in gender neutral clothing, no one's going to be able to tell whether it's a girl or a boy based on their behaviour. Oh, crying, stroppy children sound the same. We can tell you're a fan. Stop gendering the potatoes. They don't understand enough to be performing any gender whatsoever. They are performing baby. They're just cute little spuds. Shall we, shall we look at the next one? To the next one. Dun, dun, dun. In the next one, we have the most exciting product of the year. Women's lady boxers. Because it wasn't enough to say just women's or just ladies, we need to make doubly sure they know this is not for the men. These are women's lady boxers, which apparently are different from normal boxers. Are they though? Really? <laughs> the thing is, they look pretty cool. Props to them for the pattern that they have on that fabric because that's actually pretty badass. I'd wear those. I'm so delighted to see a product aimed at women that's not pink. Women, ladies. I think we got who your target audience is. Just saying. <laughs> I, I get you probably want to advertise it. You don't have to worry about the flap for uh, whipping out to pee. But, you know, <laughs> it just feels a, a bit much. There are plenty of trans women who would appreciate that kind of thing. Flat boxers, non-flat boxers, done. At the same price. I notice it's a trademark. <laughs> Women's lady boxers. <laughs> Someone God. thought that was important enough to trademark it. <laughs> but I'm going to say, like, they, they get half marks. Um, apart from the way that they've branded it at the top, the actual boxers look pretty decent. <laughs> yeah, double emphasis is weird. They're just boxers. <laughs> Next. Next. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, we have a tweet. So the tweet reads, men should not eat any food that involves a spoon. Fruity as hell. Go eat a burger. The fuck? Toxic masculinity. We're surprised you got here so late. <laughs> Is it the spoon that's the problem or the food itself? Are knives for men and spoons are for women and forks are like non-binaries? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like there's a little bit of homophobia in here. Fruity as hell. Wait, so is it just the spoon that's fruity or is fruit fruity? <laughs> How far does this go? 
fruit is only fruity if you eat it with a spoon, because the spoon is fruity in itself. Grab it with a knife. <laughs> You're okay. And I feel there was just a soup incident, and since then they've not trusted the spoons. There's some underlying spoon trauma going on. <laughs> also, how has that got over five and a half thousand likes? Like people agreed with this. They saw this and went, oh yeah. Yeah, this is a problem. This is like one of the biggest issues of our generation. Like. And 277 people also had to retweet it. So clearly there is a lot of spoon trauma out there in the world that we need to address. <laughs> if you're not a spud sproglets, maybe go a bit easy on the airplane spoon thing. Not the airplane, not the airplane. <laughs> I believe this person might be working for the spork company. They want you to get rid of your spoon so you get a spork. Or a fife. Nobody wants fife. <laughs> Sorry to any of our fife listeners. Can we look at the next one? <laughs> yes. yeah. All right, next meme, um, which is an advertisement for Father's Day. It says the the coffee pot Father's Day share treats box, and you can have meaty or veggie. So so far, I'm liking this. Um, we're not playing into the stereotype of men must have meat. Boxes consist of bloomer sandwiches with manly crust. <laughs> ah, manly crust, sausage rolls, and cakes. Contents may vary. Manly crust. What if I don't want crusts? And it's, it's such a small detail that if you just glanced at the advert, you would never really notice. The, the whole the rest of it looks great. I just really want to know what a manly crust is now. There are no crusts in the picture that I can see. Maybe we can try Googling the company. What was it? The coffee pot. The coffee pot. Father's Day. And I see nothing suggesting that there's a Mother's Day set. Uh, so sorry mothers <laughs> you don't get any manly crusts you don't get any crusts at all well you know what I say to that and not sharing the crusts with everyone manly or not <laughs> yeah oh well the manly crusts will forever remain a mystery <laughs> What do I have to imagine just how manly they are? <laughs> I feel like they, they got most of the way there. I would give them half a point because they were accepting of dads being meaty or veggie eaters. Um, but <laughs> the crusts. <laughs> I think so far the ones you've read out, we're, we're getting there with women lady boxes, almost getting it. Manly crusts, almost there, guys. Shall we see what you get next? <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, there are some nice pigeons in this. I like this one. So we have a lovely photo of two skeletons side by side with two pigeons walking around their feet, because you really need to know that detail. And <laughs> on one of the skeletons, you can see fun boobies. <laughs> A skeleton bra. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know if that would be better or worse. Sleeping might get uncomfortable. Like, because they don't move the way a ribcage moves. Look, they're like fused together. You can't. <laughs> oh, tell you what, though, when you get punched in a tit, you'd probably hurt the other person more. <laughs> you know, all seriousness, that's a very special brand of fragility if you're worried that because you can't tell the gender of skeletons. I mean, when I'm walking down the street and I see two skeletons on the sidewalk, I'm not going to be wondering, hmm, were they a straight couple? How are you going that you're seeing skeletons in the streets? <laughs> Dodgy places. <laughs> I tell you what, I bet you it's just a marketing ploy from all the people that do like Halloween and all the decorations. They're not going to have to go out and buy two skeletons. I mean, you could still buy two skeletons, but just have them without bone tits. Then it's a surprise as to what kind of relationship they're in. <laughs> I didn't realise people were so hung up on skeleton tits. Skeletons? <laughs> they all look, you know, basically the same when you strip everything else off. 
Not that I'm suggesting that you should go and test that theory. You know, look at x-rays or something. <laughs> Those spooky motherfuckers. Shall we see what joys um, lay in store for us next? <laughs> yeah, they can't get any more ridiculous than these gay soups and bone tips. So this one is just a picture of an Xbox controller. This particular product was one that was spotted in the wild. <laughs> this, this was me actually trying to shop. <laughs> this specifically aimed at the girl gamer. You know how much I love pink. And not only is it pink, but we need to put this symbol on there to make sure they know it's for girls and not anyone else. And uh, what did I buy? I went with blue. Because fuck pink. All the other controllers are for men. So you're the chrome blue one that you've got, the halo designs on another. But this one, this one is to let you know a girl can play the Xbox. I will say, it's a nice shade of pink. If you got rid of all the crappy symbols. You know, you don't have to identify as female in order to like pink. There are plenty of other people who like pink. And now they have a controller that they can't buy because that, they don't want that symbol plastered all over it. They just want a pink controller. It's so ridiculous, actually excluding people from a market. Like the women's lady boxers. We just need to make sure you're absolutely sure who this is targeted at. Girl gamer. <laughs> so ridiculous. I mean, you could put other things on there that are cool. Like the lightning bolts are cool. But why do we need gender markers? <laughs> Yeah, nothing more obnoxious than sticking a gender symbol all over everything just to mark up a price, eh? And I feel we could submit a corrected version to them. All we need is a pink controller with yellow polka dots around it and maybe a nice, like, red line in the centre of it. I think that would look lovely. And some added sound effects. <laughs> Riding into the next meme. So... Dear horrible friends, did you know that women make up over 50% of the world's population? Go figure. To cater to this emerging demographic, we're releasing a brand new product, Cards Against Humanity, for her. It's exactly the same game as the original Cards Against Humanity, but the box is pink and it costs $5 more. No! <laughs> because we're worth it. Emerging demographic? I mean, I do like to think that this one might actually be um, a bit more self-referential. So I think, I think I'd hope right. <laughs> that they are playing into that stereotype. What we're talking about today is this pointlessly gendered, same product, different color, higher price, and they're critiquing that themselves. <laughs> I need to Google it. I was doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Like, maybe someone's made it specifically to draw attention. No, no, it's real. <laughs> you can also get an extension, which is called the period pack. Oh, fuck's sake. What is this? And it has a couple of photos with it as well. One woman carrying her shopping with the cards in there and a glass of wine going, pairs nicely with a glass of chilled white wine. The bit I love the most is how unimpressed she looks in that picture. She knows this ain't it. <laughs> they have to know. I'm now looking at articles saying that Cards Against Humanity is making a statement with its new For Her box. This is an expert, professional level troll saying don't pointless the gender stuff. In which case, this has won the internet today for me. <laughs> I think you're right because at the very bottom it says the proceeds from this is going to Emily's List and then when looking at the Emily's List it is apparently seeking to put women into office who can make significant contributions in the US. So I think for this they probably deserve a round of applause. <laughs> yes it is very much a master level troll. Well done Cards Against Humanity. Okay I liked that. I'm, I'm converted. Good. Next. <laughs> So what we've got here um, is the headline for an article called the top 75 best manly hobbies for men. Manly hobbies for men. Can't have any non-manly hobbies. No, 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 no. Shall we try and find the article? Yes, let's find out some of these manly hobbies. We need to know. 
hope it's things like taking a spa day. <laughs> I mean, there's 75 of them. Surely one of them's got to be self-care. Here it is. So number one on the list, we have cooking and grilling. Lock picking, what? <laughs> How is that a hobby? Don't Why? you indulge in a bit of lock picking? <laughs> I'm afraid not. I do I do engage in chess, so which is number five. So I suppose yay, manly chess? Tattooing. No, mate, no. Tattooing is not a hobby. Do not tattoo people unless you actually know what you're doing. Oh my word. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Do you want a tattoo? I watched a YouTube tutorial on it. Magic. Oh, I like magic. <laughs> Rocket tree. Ooh. None of these, I think, are explicitly manly, really, are they? They're just, if you like it, you do it. I just, I don't even know if some of these are technically hobbies. Sorry. <laughs> what one? I'm just having occasional outbursts. Volunteering. <laughs> Yes, I just saw that. I was like, what? This is a weird list. What is the criteria for manly? I'm so confused. Meditation and yoga. I mean, okay, on the plus side, oh, there's some good things, there's some bad things. So, you know, they are playing into some stereotypes and the idea that there are manly hobbies in the first place is just ridiculous. But they are actually including stuff in the list that I think is, is a bit more enlightened. My favourite one, of course, it's camping. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we see what other manly stuff we have in store for us? <laughs> oh, God, yes, let's. Oh, what the hell is this? So following on from obviously manly hobbies, mm -hmm. and definitely one hobby everyone should have is a good skincare routine. And Tweet says, tonight I learned Mike Tears think men are so fragile they need a tiny dumb goatee to use a sheet mask. And obviously it's got a little goatee here to make you feel manly. It is silly if you feel that they need that in order to use it. However, I really love the idea of printing stupid things on these masks. We should, you know, don't stop at goatees. Let's do all sorts of things. I want to be Mr. Blobby. <laughs> That'd be fun, a Mr. Blobby face mask. We should do it. <laughs> that will be the first piece of merch we do. We'll do a Blobby face mask. Let's do it. We need more face masks with fun things on them for anyone. <laughs> more fun masks, less heteronormative, pushing this, this idea that we have to present as maximum mask or mas maximum femme. You could make more money if you don't gender stuff. Like by gendering it, you're making the, your potential customer base smaller and you're excluding other people who might otherwise be interested in your products. I mean, if you're going to have a very manly, manly product and a very feminine, feminine product, and then I'm like, well, I'm neither. So I'll buy none of your product. You color it pink and you charge me more and you can guarantee now that I'm not buying it anymore. Yes, we're trying to help you make more money because apparently that's what our society is all about. Yeah. <laughs> so this one, for some reason, particularly annoys me because what we have is a picture of a toolkit, right? A toolkit, you know, with hammers and screwdrivers and all that kind of stuff, but it's pink. And it doesn't need to be pink. It's literally branded as a woman's hand toolkit. Everything is so pink. I will not buy pink tools ever. No. <laughs> the fact is, though, it's tools. They're going to get dirty. They're going to get dust covered. They're going to be used. So really, it really doesn't matter what color they look like as long as they work. And I bet they charge more for it, too. Whereas you could just go and buy the one, the set that's immediately next to it in the shop, which will be black and like half the price. And it does the same thing. Fucking gendered shite. I knew these were going to be fun. I'm just trying to imagine, do they all have like the same five people rotating around all the companies going, I know how we'll get more money. Let's make a different product and color it pink and market it for women. I think that part of the problem may be the people who are in positions of power they tend to be 
cis men and they tend to be older and more privileged and wealthier and particularly it's a generational thing I think they come with um older values instilled in them that just don't match with the world today come on gen x step up to the plate damn it we need you <laughs> you bring such fun facts to the table alaska i bring such joy as a sister <laughs> anyway enough of that <laughs> <laughs> on to the next meme of wonder oh what do we Ooh, okay i'm really not good with football strips so i'm just going to be like black top <laughs> white shorts um, and on the center it says disney princess and it is the adidas disney princesses football set i love this what they've done is they've created um you know a, a sports football set that a ch any child could wear it doesn't matter what gender they are i'm here for this this is amazing <laughs> i like it that it's not pink. Um, so even if it is marketed towards girls, it's totally not in your face about it, like some of the products. But mm -hmm. it's also the thing where it's a football kit. So it's allowing if, you know, if you are marketing towards a traditional girls, we'll all like Disney princesses, or we'll call them a little Disney princess. It's still allowing them to get into a sport, which is sometimes still seen as predominantly male orientated. So it's allowing mm -hmm children to be involved in sport because you don't it doesn't matter what your gender is to play a sport yeah I just think it wins on every front I even I even love like the shorts they've got this little black logo on them that looks like a Disney princess crown but again Ooh. it's not like over the top you know super pink in your face it's there um and it's practical it's just the whole thing love it <laughs> God, they've done quite well, Adidas have. Well done, Adidas. No point. We got one. This is how it can be done and how you can make it accessible to any kids and not put any gender expectations on them. Whoever's wearing this can play football regardless of their gender. Love it. Very happy. Very happy. The next one, however, oh, less God. happy. Because in the next one, we've got more clothing. Um, but this one, we've, these are for babies. So, you know, slightly younger demographic. And we've got two. One of them is aimed at boys and it says, I'm super, which is cute. I love it. Yes. But then next to it, we've got the one for girls, which says, I hate my size. This is where I do the face for punching someone in the face. I, I don't think that we should be body shaming babies. Just sorry, and, and why are we only shaming the girl baby? <laughs> All of the kids should get the one that says I'm super. I mean, no offense, but I don't think that the baby is going to even recognize what their thighs are meant to look like. They're just going to be like, I've got legs and that's enough. <laughs> Who would look at this and go, yes, that that is the outfit that my child needs. <laughs> Do you really want to subject your child to that when they're barely even able to walk yet? It's just, that's terrible parenting. Don't ever buy that one. If you're going to put some message on your child's clothing, at least make it a positive one. <laughs> it's saying a lot more about what you think of the child when you put that on them. And we're not here for that. No, no, no. I don't feel any parent should really be starting that shame cycle with their child at any age but especially when they're still really young and developing you're just setting yourself up for creating a very unhappy human you deserve better than that everyone is super everyone is awesome when we're wearing our onesie let's look at something else i don't want to look at that anymore that's shocking <laughs> oh what the hell is this one it is a giant round ball of some kind of food, and it is called Henton's Round Meal. Macaroni and beef serves three men. Oh, has, it's, oh, boil in a bag. That, that is sad. Who, who's eating this? That's sad. Don't eat this. I don't know if maybe it's something that's more normal 
in other countries but I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that here like this is it's a big ball of macaroni cheese can't forget the meat and beef one just on a practical level stacking on a shelf it's circular that is the worst shape for packing <laughs> so no failure on that point alone imagine trying to store that at home you put it in your cupboard you try to put the next one in they're just rolling back out of the floor <laughs> Balls that's, of mac and beef everywhere. This just brings me sadness. It hurts my soul. And that's before we even get to the bit about it serves three men. Not not three people. Just three men. That looks hefty. That would feed more than three. You no, know, it kind of reminds me of when you get um packets of facial tissues, like just for blowing your nose or whatever. And uh, you get the normal size packs, and then they also sell man size packs because I don't know, do they have you think they have bigger noses? What is what is this? <laughs> Why did you not just say like normal size and super size? Because sometimes other people want the super size ones too. <laughs> Don't you know all women have to have petite tiny noses while men have huge noses? That's why I have to contour mine. <laughs> No, it's just weird. It's just the whole thing, the weird rounds. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, well, no. Oh, delete. <sighs> shall we have another? I think we shall. What do we have next? We have some books for children, teaching them their ABCs. Nice educational books. Um, there are two of them. One of them is ABCs for boys. And the other one is ABCs for girls, because apparently we have to teach them differently. The girls one is 50 cents more. Like it's the same alphabet with the same number of letters. Why does it cost more? <laughs> and of course, we have the, the requisite colouring. Well, oh, even better than that, though, as you can see on the covers, the, the boy book has trucks and planes and like heavy machinery, but the girls' book has butterflies and clouds. The only thing that would make this okay is if you actually opened the girls' ones and found it was teaching them useful stuff, like M equals misogyny. Actually, no, we need to be teaching boys that too, so I take it back. Stick the books together, <laughs> one book, same price, same alphabet. Oh, well, you can see just a little bit of one or two of the pictures. So on like the boy book, it looks like A has an airplane or a jet of some kind and B is some kind of truck. I don't know why that's B. I thought that would have been T. And then on the girls one, you have F and you can see the top of a flower and T for teapot. Do I look wow. impressed? You look super impressed. Why can you not just have D for dog and then both kids like dogs? Because the boys one goes through all the different types of trucks assigned to each letter. I don't oh, think I want to look at this geez. anymore. What's next? <laughs> oh, next. We have an ad for tactical baby gear. And here we've got the tagline. We've completely reinvented baby gear for dads. And what we have is obviously looks like army kit, um, you know, your typical sandy color uh, backpack, you know, bags that you'd carry all your baby supplies in. And obviously the backpacks, a nice camo color where you can fit in the bottle, the rattle, the dummy. So it's nice and manly. It's just a diaper bag. <laughs> the effort somebody went to to design this to look as undiaper bag as possible. Suppose if it gets dads helping with their kids more that might be a good thing but you should be doing that anyway the product itself is fine really it doesn't need to have the word daddy on there it could be used by either parent you don't need to specify which one you also have mums that participate in the armed forces who would probably like this hashtag dad's life it says but also in the background you can see a gun <laughs> that's probably not safe for changing your child near Oh, America, you're weird. I'm, I'm sorry, sweeties. Like, love you, but you're, you're weird. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not the kind of thing you want around your baby. And also, I'm sure there must be parents who don't want to ascribe to either one of those labels because those are very binary labels. 
And, you know, there will be parents who identify as, as non-binary or agender or gender fluid, you know, all, all sorts of other options who may also want to buy this. Stop limiting your marketing potential. I quite like the drop zone, not going to lie. <laughs> I don't want to be involved. I don't want to know. Your turn. Your turn. I did dad. It's dad life. <laughs> dad life. <laughs> In which case, I get to tell you about this cake. I was trying to think of a nice thing to describe it, but I assume is for maybe a gender reveal party. Side note, I hate those. Stupid idea. It doesn't oh, matter. Gender reveal parties, fuck off. Half of it is blue and has a police badge on it. And the other half is pink with a pink bow on it. That's not bad enough. Around the, the base of the cake, it has the words bows or badges so so stupid like the whole premise of gender reveal parties are get in this sea it's gonna put it <laughs> only boys will grow up to be police people and only girls will play with bows this is essentially coming from the same place as those baby outfits we saw earlier where it was like super hero versus i hate my thighs the idea that one's gonna go have a job and we're gonna ingrain that in him that he's gonna be successful and do cool things brackets cool and one we're just gonna treat like an object to look pretty until we marry them off and then it's not our problem the stereotype is that they do cool things and girls are just about the visuals and that's just deeply unfair really disempowering your other child is just like, what? You know what they need in their lives? What? They need a savior. That savior's Mr. Blobby. <laughs> just comes in with a cake and goes. <laughs> Don't know what that was. That's what happens when Mr. Blobby belly flops onto the cake and then sticks it up off the floor. <laughs> Now you can have a nice purple cake with a pink and a blue mixed in. <sighs> right. What else do we have? This one. We've got three trash cans next to each other. We've got one for plastic and can. So yay for recycling. Nice. We've got, we've got one with a little image of a little, you know, one of those traditional men that you see on signs everywhere. Uh, dumping trash. In yeah, the person just chucking their trash in, so regular trash. And then we've got the one next to that. Again, another trash bin, person dropping it in, but this time the little stick person has the little skirt at the bottom. So obviously we're implying here that men have one kind of trash and women have another. And then we've got the cycling. Wait, what? How do they police this? What do they do if you use the wrong bin? <laughs> I don't fit any of those bins. <laughs> what I'd like to think is there's that one mall security guard who's walking about, he's watching people putting the trash away. There, there's no need for this. What the fuck? <laughs> so let's try and, and give them the benefit of the doubt for just a second. Maybe they were trying to be inclusive as in not just having a male looking symbol, but going, oh, we should have ones that represent other people too. But you should probably put them on the same bin rather than separate bins. <laughs> Where am I going to put my trash? I'm just going to have to throw it on the floor. You're just going to sit it on top. <laughs> that, that's where all the, the gender non-conforming people go. Maybe you have to ask someone of the appropriate gender to put it in for you. <laughs> just have to stand there waiting. <laughs> I mean, if they were trying to be inclusive, they did muck up the signs slightly. I can't think of any other reason why they would do it apart from they were trying to be more inclusive and in including people of other genders on the sign but yeah put them on the same sign honestly i think that'll work better for you male and female trash my god i can't believe we're getting to that level of gender shall we do one more one more one more one more time have we saved the best to last oh maybe Maybe, because I have a story for this one. <laughs> this last one that we're looking at is, again, the headline of an article. And the article is called 21 Adorable She Sheds to Inspire Your Own Garden Escape. 
it's it's some very strange terminology <laughs> she says <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm assuming that, that they were thinking of like the heteronormative man cave when they came up with this oh it is because a little bit further down it does go as long as man caves uh, are going to continue so it does seem to be exactly that we should just have people caves it does remind me of a conversation that I had with someone, this guy who had moved from Germany to Scotland and was setting up um, an, an art studio and, and building like a, a little house behind it for himself and stuff because he described what he was building as his man cave. Then he kind of stopped for a moment and he went, do you get lady caves? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. I think that's a very different thing. No, let's not go there. <laughs> Oh, sweet summer child. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> so, um, we're calling them she sheds, people, just so you're aware to avoid the lady caves. The idea it has to be a, a she shed or a man cave. I'm like, if you've got your own room, just call it your own room. You don't need to make it a gendered thing. Name it after the function, I think, would probably be the most logical thing to do. Like, if you have a gaming room, you don't have to call it a man cave. You could just call it the gaming room. That's it. Maybe it's actually the sex dungeon, but to make it sound less, you know, ooh. Don't ask <laughs> what happens in the she shed. <laughs> it's just she said, yes. I will never be able to hear the words she shed without thinking about lady caves. <laughs> <laughs> that blowing my blobby mind. All right. Oh. We had enough of pointlessly gendered stuff. I think we said that was going to be the last one. We should just have to save the rest of these for another time. Which is a shame because I was very excited to talk about the oddly gendered frogs. <laughs> we need a part two so we can talk about um, how the frogs are not gay. They're turning the frogs gay. Well, we'll definitely have to make a part two then. Overall, I feel like we had a bit of a... I can't speak. <laughs> I feel like overall... It, we've had a bit of a mix of things today. There's been some stuff in there that was not okay. <laughs> but then there is some wins in there too, which made me very happy. We've definitely learned a lot about colour coding for gender today. Um, but it, it has been nice to see some people showing us how to expertly troll those expectations and also other people just not buying into that and just making everything accessible for people, which is really nice to see. We've got some good examples in there of how to be better and the, and I guess the hope is that over time that companies will get better and stop with the stupid just gendering things that don't need to be gendered. I mean if anything we've learned today it just shortens your marketability. Also if you put rainbows and stuff I'll buy it just as a side note. <laughs> you don't have to save it just for June I will buy it all year round. The alphabet mafia exists all year round surprisingly. <laughs> Do cater to us. Today's been, there's been a lot of laughs, let's be honest. But next time we, we wanted to talk about something a bit more serious and important. Yes, there has been a lot of laughs today. <laughs> Terrifying. Apparently that was him falling down there. That was a bit... <laughs> but next time we're meeting, we're going to be discussing World AIDS Day because the episode will be releasing at that time the 1st of December. And so we wanted to talk about that and share sort of our insights on World AIDS Day and the AIDS crisis that happened back in the 70s and 80s, and also sort of doing a little bit of education for everyone as well. Don't forget to check us out on our socials, motherfuckers. They will be linked down below, but also remember if you've enjoyed today, Give it a like, give it a wee comment and engage with us. And then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified when the next episode comes out. On that note, it, it, we should probably finish up. <laughs> have, have we done the thing? I think we did the thing. 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 <laughs>